Welcome to Electrified. It's your host, Dylan Loomis. Real quick, thank you to our newest patrons, Dave, Thomas, Christopher, Conrad, Adil, and Barry. And of course, all of our longtime patrons. I really appreciate you guys. And I'm super pumped to start talking about Bitcoin, macroeconomics, investing, and some other things on Patreon. So if you're not yet a member, it is an option down below. But getting into the news, first up today, Tesla Korea is planning to launch a CCS1 adapter in the first half of 2021. More info about the release date and the ordering process will be made available in Korea's version of WeChat. There is no confirmation at least not yet, of sale or support in North America. This CCS charging adapter will of course work with Tesla's proprietary connector. With Tesla's launch of the Model 3 and Supercharger V3s in Europe, Tesla did switch its main charging standard to CCS. And CCS just stands for Combined Charging System, and it's a connector that's used for fast charging. It is an open international standard, meaning that car manufacturers all over the world use it. it gets the combined part of its name as the connector builds on a low power, slow charging type 2 connector. The CCS connector uses some connections of the type 2 interface, but then goes further and adds two additional DC power lines, which are capable of running at higher voltages compared to the standard connector. So Tesla of course has superchargers, but in 2018, it confirmed that the European Model 3 would be equipped with the type 2 CCS connector. This means that Tesla owners can access both the supercharger network and also use third-party chargers that use type 2 or CCS standards. And last year, Tesla confirmed the Model S and X were compatible with its new CCS adapter that cost about $190 at the time, and Tesla offered retrofits for older cars. Basically, North American Tesla owners were unable to take advantage of the third-party charging networks using the CCS standard, and this adapter could change that if it does end up coming to the US. Next up, we got some new comments from Piedmont Lithium CEO Keith Phillips, and he does touch on their relationship with Tesla. We're very excited to be partnering with Tesla. It's obviously a great company, a great American company, the number one electric vehicle company in the world. They're growing very rapidly. And one thing they'll need a lot of is lithium. Uh, so they're going to be building a very large electrical vehicle plant and battery plant in Texas. Uh, we're going to be the exclusive spodumene supplier for that uh, that plant, and that's very exciting for us, obviously. Uh, we're spending a lot of time with them. We're in, the, in conversation with them every every week as we lead toward deliveries in 2022. We worried about competition. Are you and Tesla working together? I mean, could you ultimately become competitors at some point? Uh, I think more likely partners. I think the way I think about, you know, lithium's interesting. Electric vehicle growth is 20, 30, 40% a year for the next couple of decades as we grow from two or 3% electric vehicle penetration to 100% by 2040. And so the world's going to need a lot of lithium to fuel all the batteries for all those cars. We welcome competition. We're very fortunate. We're located in North Carolina, uh, which is the cradle of the lithium business. All the lithium in the world came from North Carolina from the 1950s to the 1980s. We're 30 miles west of Charlotte with major infrastructure surrounding us, a great talent pool in our area, low power costs, et cetera. So we'll be a very low cost mm -hmm. producer. We think we'll be the lowest cost producer in the world. Uh, so the last thing we're worried about is competition. We say, bring it on. We're hoping uh, the world's gonna need a lot of people and uh, we're looking forward to right. being a leader in the business. And Piedmont has gone up along with it. This is a, a deal in its infancy, right? It is. So we're going to supply them uh, some initial lithium for their Texas operations. We're talking to them as well about selling lithium hydroxide to them more on a global basis. And we're talking to a number of other people as well. So every major car company, battery company, cathode company uh, is searching for lithium supplies. And they all see the writing on the wall, which is that EV demand is picking up. Uh, new EV models are going to be built. And the supply chain for the raw materials like lithium just hasn't developed to the stage it needs to. And it's going to be an issue. And I think uh, these companies are starting to feel pressure. So we're very excited about the relationship with Tesla. We look forward to doing more with them. Uh, we expect to announce sales agreements with some other pretty strong companies as well, global names in the car business, the battery business, et cetera. And uh, it's important to be aligned with good customers. And in our business, there's nobody better than them. Should we be listening for more announcements from your company sometime in the near future? Yeah, we're going to uh, 
we're focused on some other things in the next month or so, but I, I would, we're hopeful that in the first half of next year, we put uh, uh, you know, 100% of our production basically under long-term agreement with a, a few different companies. We, we don't need a lot wow. of customers. These are, these are big companies. They need, um, they need big suppliers. So we, you know, we expect to have three or four kind of core customers uh, kind of across the auto space. And we have relationships now that we're confident we'll lead to doing that by certainly by the middle of next year with some news, hopefully in the first part of the year. Uh, so for sure. So on a broader timeline, we had some big announcements last week. Uh, we announced that we've launched our definitive feasibility study. This is really the final bankable document that will lead us to be financeable uh, as we build our business next summer. Uh, and we also announced late last week that we received the federal permit we need for our chemical operations in K Kings Mountain, North Carolina. This is a massive uh, milestone for us. We've been working on it for some time, but we applied actually in August. We received the permit uh, in early December. Uh, this is like the FDA approval for a business like ours. And uh, we're not sure the market fully appreciates the significance of it, but it's very important to us. And it brings us just that one stage closer to becoming a major producer uh, for our clients. So the new Model 3 headlights may have adaptive capabilities. Raphael on Twitter was basically deciphering some imprinted code on the new headlights and came to the conclusion that these new headlights are rated as adaptive and cornering bending lights. Basically, what this means is the lights adapt to things based on the steering wheel position, speed, and some other factors to bend and shape the light in a more optimal way, making cornering and turning safer in areas that may otherwise not be well lit. Bloomberg NEF, which has tracked battery costs, reported that a cost under $100 per kilowatt hour, the magic number we've all been waiting for, has been reported for the first time for electric buses in China. It is a historic milestone to see pack prices of less than $100 per kilowatt hour reported, and within just a few years, we will see the average price in the industry cross this point. Most of these buses use LFP battery chemistry, which of course are making their way into passenger vehicles. And I would note here that there is a very good chance Tesla already has pack costs for at least some versions below this threshold. It just has not been officially reported. Next up, VW unveiled a fast charging station in the Arizona desert to test charging at high temperatures where temps can reach 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 49 degrees Celsius. This is one of the most extensive charging stations at a global test facility and it's capable of charging up to 50 vehicles. The chargers feature different connectors used in the US, Europe, and China, and engineers are evaluating real-time data to see how various chargers compare. Some of the chargers are capable of charge rates up to 350 kilowatts. And in case you're feeling a little bummed at the lack of spectacle this week for Tesla stock, here is a tweet from Gary Black sharing some positive positive encouragements and catalysts upcoming. We have the S&P inclusion, a credit upgrade, a full self-driving release, fourth quarter deliveries set to smash expectations, active managers looking to buy more Tesla shares into the new year, Cybertruck updates, made in China Model Y, Biden's inaugural address, full year 2021 deliveries, and then that leaves him with roughly an 830 price target in the next six to 12 months. But that's gonna wrap it up for today's episode. Please take a moment to like the video if you did and consider subscribing for more tesla content but with that i look forward to seeing you in the next video i hope that you have a great day